Hey, hey. So the first thing you want to do in building a submarine is thinking of the overall shape. Some people will figure out the room layout first. What I would do is I'd figure out the overall shape of, of what I want to do. In this tutorial, we're going to go over making a simple dugong. Your very first dugong-like submarine, because everyone loves making the dugong. So what you want to go is your structure tab or your alt tab. doesn't matter. And type in shell. Now, the shell is just the outer walls of the submarine, and you have all, all of this to select. The, don't worry about the shuttle shells, that's only for building shuttles. Shell A 0 degrees and shell A 90 degrees can be adjustable in length. By grabbing these little squares at the very end, you can adjust how long or short they're going to be. On the right side of your screen, there's going to be a detailed list of the uh, properties that you can adjust. Uh, for the shell A, we can adjust its max health, to, you know, if you want to make it really OP for whatever reason. Or you could change the color of your sprite. Uh, if you want to make a gray color, let's do... bring all these values down to around 150 and you got yourself slightly gray the alpha is basically just transparency so we're gonna grab shell a and we'll grab shell a 16 for the rear of the submarine uh you could use your arrow keys to finally adjust the shells so they can mesh together you kind of want it to overlap a little bit and then the tail if you type in tail in the filter you get a tail fin old or any of the tails for the back of your submarine so we're just gonna adjust that a little bit we kind of want room for the ballast, so I'll go shell A 18. Going to the properties, I can go to mirror X or mirror Y. This will change the uh, the image of the sprite. You can mirror this. What you want to do is have the dotted lines to be inside of the submarine and the smooth end on the outside. So in this case, since we want it to dip down a little bit, we mirror X. And using the arrow keys, we adjust it to make it flush. In the editor, you can copy and paste. So what we want to do here is copy and paste the shell A to the top. So instead of going back down to the menu, you could just control C, control V, and you have all your stuff. Look at that. Now it's looking like a super marine. Now in this case, we're making the valves very, very small. So there's going to be a lot of adjusting you could do. You can highlight your shells by clicking and dragging, moving it around, and it still stays together. If you want to make the uh, the submarine a little bit bigger, what we could do is increase the sprites. Some of these tail fins are actually um, multiple sprites that you can adjust. I believe this one is like this. And it is, it, there's a grid in the game, but sometimes it doesn't really follow the grid, so you got to use the arrow keys to kind of adjust it like that but we'll stick with this tail fin old because we kind of want the ballast to be a bit like down here so you have like room for it uh we need to increase the size of the sprite so on the properties go to scale let's double the scale so it's 0.500 right now uh so it's one i think that's way too big so 0.75 Another thing when considering making the shell of the submarine is you got to figure out where the airlock is going to be. So this is going to be a dugong-like submarine, meaning the airlock is going to be at the top. This one's going to go all the way down. It's going to be smooth throughout the bottom. Now, to make this airlock, we need to make it door height. What we want to do, just type in airlock in the all tab. Bring the automatic airlock doors or just the airlock doors in general. But for us, I'm going to use the automatic airlock doors. When you, when you drop down this uh, item assembly, this is called an item assembly since it's all in one, it's going to be highlighted. So you, you, all you have to do is kind of just use your arrow keys and make it flush with the, uh, the floor. Once that's done, what we could do next is grab your uh, shell and just flush it out. Now, if you notice that you can see the components through the shell, what, that, what you need to do is change your alpha and just make it 255. That's the thing with the uh, alpha. It basically changes the transparency. And you got to figure out where your docking hatch is going to be. All right, because it's a very simple submarine, we're going to keep our docking hatch with the uh, airlock over here. So you want to type in docking and bring up the automated docking hatch. This will make things a lot easier. The automated docking hatch is basically multiple parts into one called an item assembly. What you want to do is uh, try to make it flush with the very top. Make the hatch, this is the hatch here, this custom hatch, make it flush with the top so you won't have any clipping problems. Now for these components, if you don't want it to show in-game, highlight all these components and press hidden in-game. You could do this with the entire sub. you could do this with anything. You can make your entire submarine invisible, hidden in-game. If you were to spawn in, you wouldn't see it. The next part is you can mess around with all these shells until you get the shape you want. We could use these shell caps to finish off the ends over here, like this, make it flush with the uh, the shell over here. Because everything's in a grid, there's not really much you need to adjust, like 
that. You could just mess around with. Perfect. You can have it like that. Then grab your shell A 90 degrees. And because those dotted lines are facing on the outside, press mirror X and you got it on the inside. Hmm. This shell A here looks like it's uh, peeking on the inside. What we kind of want to do is, and instead of it falling the grid, you can uh, basically free aim it. Holding shift and left click, you can free aim. Because what we want to put here is an uh, inside wall. All right, the next part is basically going to make the front of the submarine. Shell A zero degrees. Since I copied and pasted from the previous shell, all you have to do is make it follow the grid. Now, since this is a 90 degree and it looks like it's clipping, what we could do to make it a bit more organic looking is start using the shell A 45 degrees. Uh, you see that the bigger end has a dot line curve. You could just place it in there. Oh, perfect. That adds a bit more shape to the whole thing. All right, since we're starting to look really good here, we were making the front. So we got to have a, a nose cap. So for the nose caps, just like the rear tail, they have some of these nose caps have huge multi components like um, this front G2 part one. It has part two and in part three, you can make a really big one. Or what you could do instead of doing it this way is grab the front A and just increase the sprite size in the scale section and just enlarge it and you get the same results. You can do something like this, right? Or uh, if you want to add a bit more shape to it, you can uh, start using the more uh, organic looking shells. Instead of having a huge nose, you want to type in front. Perfect, look at that. You know what? I'm going to highlight all these. Uh, actually, I'm going to just highlight these two, change it, type in shell, and shell A14. Press X. Bam, actually, I kind of like this look. Instead of uh, pressing Control C, Control V, you could just right click and then uh, copy the clipboard and then paste. There you go. That kind of that looks that looks a bit sleek. In the top left menu, we have something called toggle visibility. Now, toggle visibility basically allows you to isolate different components of a sub. So you can have the lighting show only or delete the lighting. You can have no walls, but it shows all the uh, other stuff. You can not show the wires. This is only for editor though. In order to make everything a uniform color, what we want to do is close the items. And this will close all like the doors and the hatches. Highlight, drag and highlight everything. And because everything's highlighted, just start messing with the knobs. And they should be all the same color. Perfect. So press the Alt tab and type in fin. Now you have all these fins to work with that you can put on the outside of the sub. Now they don't really have a hitbox or anything. This is all just for decorative purposes to make your submarine a bit more submarine looking. So we can grab these fins. That's a really tiny fin, actually. We gotta, if you want to undo a mistake, press Control Z. Perfect. Now, if you notice that this fin is on top of the shell, and maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want the shell to show. So what you want to do is change something called Sprite Depth. This will determine how deep your sprite is going to be in comparison to everything. Now, let's just open up all these doors and everything's good to go. So now that we have our entire shell, we got to think of the inside layout. Now for the engine room, we obviously know the engine room is going to be at the back. This is kind of like a given. Now for us, we know what the ballast is going to be at the bottom of the submarine. So this is going to be pretty easy. You want to type in inside and select large horizontal inside walls. The large horizontal inside wall and the large vertical inside wall can be adjusted for length. Uh, we want the ballast to be door height. That way um, you don't have to crouch to get in there. It's it's pretty nice and, and normal. So you want to type in door, grab any door, custom door, and make it flush with the uh, the shell. And try to make your large horizontal inside walls flush with the top and then just stretch all the way to the end. Now for the engine room, because it's we have a large engine and everything's kind of centered, we kind of want this room to be just large. We'll make a cutoff point. Make a large vertical inside wall and then just drag it down to the bottom. Use your arrow keys in there. That's a cutoff point. This is our entire uh, place. Now, this submarine look, actually looks pretty tall. Um, what we could do is you can work with all the space with this height. Or if you don't want it to be this tall, you can adjust and go back and adjust all the shells. There you go. We just we just lowered the height of our submarine. So now everything's kind of door height. You don't have to do that. All right, just a little bit of adjusting. Obviously, you don't have to do this. Highlight everything at the top and just make it flush there. Bam. There you go. Everything's door height. So for navigation, I always keep it at the front. Grab, type in door and select 
window door with buttons or door with buttons. Any one you want. Because the one with buttons allow you just to click the door and it opens. The other ones require... To make this room a bit more square, what we could do is grab inside walls. Vertical inside walls and just like plate the front. This way, the, the front is going to get really armored. And you don't have to worry about weird geometry. So it's not, so you don't have to go down to that curb. Or you can keep that curb if you want, but uh, we'll keep it like this. What, we're, what we need to do here is actually place down a hatch. So we want to divide our, uh, our ballast tanks into multiple rooms. That way if, uh, one, hall, if one gets breached, um, the other ones are still working fine. Get, grab a large vertical wall inside and try cutting them evenly. Or however you like it. What you could also do, because we have a lot, like a lot of ballast to work with, we can actually make a second floor room down here and make these two only ballast tanks. We can rock with one, two, three, four. We have four bottom rooms down here. This room can have its own hatch. Oh, security storage. Yeah, we can have a security storage here. That's really good. All right, so for these uh, floors, so for the ballast, we need a, a way to access them. So we can't really have one long large horizontal wall just covering everything we need to actually divide it up so shorten this wall and type in hatch now what you want to get is hatch with buttons so you can open it and close it and place this hatch wherever you want it to be um you also need is a platform platform basic so when you open the hatch right you don't immediately fall through it and we have this like large horizontal inside wall and clean up the top here and we'll do the same thing for the other ones and since we need uh, room for, let's say, ammunition storage, it's going to be under the captain's room, but accessible to everyone. And it's going to be in front of the uh, the captain's room or the captain navigation room. The navigation room doesn't need to be that big. Like this. There you go. We need to line up the hatch with buttons with the, uh, the docking hatch. Make sure everything's all flush and then... Just close it off with the uh, the large horizontal walls, but make sure everything is nice and tidy. Something like this. And we want to close that gap. You grab the inside wall and just slip it in there. Increase the sprite depth so it's under it. There you go. Well, the reason why is you want a straight ladder going down instead of having one ladder stagger and then another light a ladder stagger. It's a bit more efficient this way. All right, next you need to select a ladder. So just like the walls, ladders can also be adjusted for length. So what you wanna do is um, line up the, uh, the center of this ladder with the center of the hatch as much as you can. And set it down down there. Make sure there's a little bit at the top. There's a little bit of ladder at the top so that when you dock the hatch, it connects with the other ladder. And you, you want to do this with all these hatches so you can gain access to the uh, rooms below it. All right for these ones, I don't like to clip it to the top because sometimes it messes with the waypoints. I, I, I gave it a little gap. And you want to do this for all of the hatches. All right, so this part's going to be very weird to deal with because of this, uh, this overall shape. And here you can have an inside wall. blocking the bottom and then you can have multiple layers of these inside walls just layered at the bottom making the very bottom left of the submarine very thick and armored all right and increasing the sprite depth so it clips to the bottom like that so you have something like this and you can have a large platform that goes like this down here so you could use this bottom part of this uh submarine as a bilge to drain out all the water that's flooded in. Actually, stairs right might work in this case because it's nice and... There you go. There you go. Use the uh, stairs right short and we'll use the ladder to go down all the way down here and if you want to get back up. Now, we'll use doors to start dividing everything. So, back in the navigation, grab window doors with buttons and start dividing the doors accordingly or the way you want it to be. So, let's say we want... So we have the gunnery room and we have the navigation room. Let's say in between here, you'd want uh, to put all your diving suits because the airlock's just above you. Next, you're gonna need the reactor room, right? You can start dividing this up. We have like the mechanics room and then we have the reactor room all in the center over here. 
All right, it's up to you how you want to divide it up. But the primary rooms that you are going to need would be navigation, gunnery, reactor, airlock, engine, and ballast. All right, so let's just place the reactor. Type in reactor in the alt tab and then nuclear reactor. Just place it, place it here. Type in navigation and you grab the navigation terminal and not the shuttle terminal because the navigation terminal actually has what you call it signals to work with as with the shuttle navigation terminal you only have one signal out then get the status monitor and place it adjacent to it to link uis together select the navigation terminal hold space and left click the status monitor and select display side by side when linked on the right side of the menu it will show both the status monitor and the navigation terminal you want to display side by side when link on both of them because only one of them is right now. You want to select both of them. Type in pump and select the pumps. Don't select small pumps, just select the pumps. This is for the ballast tanks. So these are our ballast rooms. Now type in pump again. Select automatic bilge pump. What an automatic bilge pump is, it's an item assembly that detects water. And when it detects water, it automatically pumps out the water using these uh, components. Uh, you kind of want to do the same thing maybe for the top. Typically, you want automatic bilge pumps at the bottom floors where the water could go down into. So this storage room here is going to need one. What else are we going to need? Oh yeah, periscopes. Basically guns. Now, it's up to you how you want where you want to place these guns, but you want maximum coverage typically. So what I'll do is on the submarine like this, probably four guns in total. So type in coil gun. Uh, let's say you want a coil gun here. Select the coil gun and you can adjust its radius and how far it can uh, rotate. Now, if you want to do an over rotation like this, but you want to flip the other side, you need to do some weird stuff. So you just want to grab the node on the left side, 360 this one, and then just keep adjusting it until you get exactly what you want. And it, it gets really finicky, but copy and paste and using the mirror X and mirror Y, you can adjust how everything's gonna look. Place it in front of the fin, this. The fin shouldn't be blocking anything at all. Uh, let's say you want the railgun at the bottom. It's either you can have the railgun at the bottom, as like so. Right, on a, maybe on the fourth gun, you want it to be, you don't, you don't want an actual gun at the start, but you wanna be able to upgrade it to have another gun. You can use something called a turret hard point. Now what turret hard points are is basically like, they don't, they are not guns until you upgrade them into whatever you want. By default, they only face in one direction. So you kind of want to grab one of the nodes and adjust it the way you want to adjust it. Now that line in the center is where is where the gun's facing. So now let's say you have all four of your guns ready to go. What you need is a periscope, a loader, and a capa super capacitor. So periscopes can be used on any gun. They don't need, they, they, there's no specific type. Actually, we're going to need three periscopes and a periscope base. Now this room is going to be very cramped. I'm going to type in loader so we know that we have two coil guns what we need is a coil gun loader the coil guns are in the rear i'm going to place these on the rear now and we know we have a turret hard point so we're going to replace one of these uh periscopes with a base now this base is going to be corresponding to this turret hard point so when you upgrade this turret hard point to like a, let's say a coil gun this will turn into a periscope it's gonna be fine then it needs to be accompanied with a loader base and because we have a railgun, this periscope in the center is going to be associated with the railgun. So we need a railgun loader. Select your coil gun loader and link your coil gun loader by holding space and left clicking this coil gun corresponding to that loader. Like this. And we want the railgun loader to be... And you want to do the same thing with the loader base and the turret hard point. Now we're going to come back to the guns later to wire them. We're not, we're not going to do wiring right now. We got to set up all the rest of the machines for the uh, rooms. So in the bottom right here, since it's going to be ammo storage, we need ammunition shelves. Uh, and because we have a rail gun, we need a rail gun shell rack, right? You can place something like this. Because we, it looks like we have room for two. We could just place them on top of each other like this. We could also have a security locker for just guns in general. Right, we can have a secure steel cabinet. And this is where we get to put all your guns and whatnot. Hi, in the center here, you want diving suit lockers. So the diving suit locker usually comes in, uh, it actually comes in assembly uh, because it's just two parts. It's the oxygen tank shelf and the diving suit locker. And we put diving equipment. We need diving equipment. So we need a, let's bring a large diving suit locker. 
but this large steel cabinet has everything you need. I don't really like all the default stuff, so I just kind of try to stack for more space. You know what? Let's put a harpoon rack. So you want to type in weapon holder and uh, place them, select the weapon holder, press E, and type in harpoon. Put the harpoon gun in there. And notice the harpoon gun is empty. Grab any harpoon ammunition you want and just spam click into the uh, weapon holder. You can even rotate the sprite around like this so it's on the side. So let's keep it 90 degrees so it makes it, everything look a bit cleaner. All right, so for the reactor room. The reactor room is typically the place where you keep all your junction boxes into one area. Now, you're probably going to need a lot of junction boxes depending on how many stuff you have. 10 junction boxes and on the left here we're gonna have some other cool stuff right what you could do is sacrifice one of these ballasts right remove one of these ballasts and change to have that as a junction box room only but that's all up to you now for the engine room typically this is where mechanics are gonna uh, hang out so have a medium steel cabinet and fill it with welders uh, maybe like five of these things with uh welding torches all right and then type in wrench and place you know the amount of wrenches you need right we can also turn this room into like a fabrication room if you want so you can get a fabricator this is more like a secondary stuff that you may or may not even use you know what the reaction room doesn't need to be that big so what we could do is make this part of the mechanics room you grab the cabinets you could put all your fuel rods here let's say a fabricator here and then you could put a deconstructor right so you're probably wondering where the medical room is going to be right what we could do is remove one of these ballasts sacrifice our y movement so we can have another room. See how we have a big gap here? Maybe we can expand this a little bit. So this here is a ballast. Uh, we have a medical fabricator, right? Medical cabinet. Right, you can have a research station. Do a little bit of adjusting to make it look pretty good. All right, bam. So now you have a resting place. Perfect. Do a little bit of adjusting here. Uh, we're also gonna need an automatic bilge here since there's no way for the water to be drained if it were to be flooded So we we'll just place it right under the fabricator. All right, so we sacrifice our ballast room for a medical bay All right, so for this mechanic room, it looks like we're gonna need some more storage because now we have a fabricator We'll use large steel cabinet and what you want to do is you want to link Then display side by side when links it's going to show both UIs when you select the fabricator Grab some crate shelves. They have a rotation option, so we could just rotate it side like this, top, and you can have a crate shelf down here at the bottom like this. Maybe in the corner over here, we could place a junction box. I don't know, for lights or something. All right, so the next part is, uh, I forgot to place the super capacitors. Those super capacitors, um, they can be placed near the guns, it, or they can all be placed in the electrical room. Most people like to place them near the guns so they can adjust the, uh, the charge right. With the new update, you want to press E and select the recharge rate to be around 50% because by default, they're at zero now. All right, and now you have your room layout, all the things you kind of need. All right, there's one more item we need, and that's an oxygen generator. For an oxygen generator, it looks like we're running out of space for a lot of this stuff. You know what? We got to remove this bunk bed. Now, for the oxygen generator, press E, type in oxygen tank and then just fill it up. So the next part is wiring. Now um, we're gonna keep the wiring very simple so it's not gonna take as long. So the first thing you wanna do is go to wiring mode on the top right, hover your mouse over the reactor and press E. This will open up the wiring. Using the number keys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the top of your keyboard, you can select different types of wires. Now the colors don't matter at all. It just It's just more for organization. So let's go drag and drop over power out press escape now you can pin your wires on the wall by left clicking now if you want to undo these pins you want to right click all right just to make things simple hover over the junction box and press e just like you did with the reactor click and drag over the power now let's just hook up all these uh junction boxes so press e in the junction box drag and drop on top of a node on top of the power node now each node can only hold five this is why we need multiple junction boxes. Now do the same thing to the one adjacent to it, power. And then keep going. Make uh, Just chain them together. So we finished the bottom of the junction boxes. Now we can do the same thing with the top. But this junction box in the bottom left is going to be the one that connects all the junction boxes together. So we're going to connect this one above this time. So now there's three wires on one node. Now with this junction box, do the same thing. 
So now we have our junction boxes wired. Now we have a junction box here in the engine room. You can keep your wires very clean by holding shift and it will only stay on uh, the perpendiculars. So using uh, holding shift WASD, we can move around and try to clean up. Let's connect it to this junction box. So now all the junction boxes are all connected to the reactor. So all the junction boxes are connected. Now we need to connect the machines together. So the engine, it's pretty simple. Power in, right? If you want to clean it, hold shift. Connect it to this power box over here. There's the super capacitors need power. For super capacitors, they have two notes, power in and power out. The power out goes, goes towards the gun. The power in comes from the junction box or the energy source. So now all the super capacitors have their power in. Now we need to power out. This is where the power is going towards to. Now the bottom super capacitor is going to be connected to the bottom left gun right power in the top right is going to be connected to the top right hard point there you go the next part is actually lights we need to take care of the lights in order to do lighting properly you need to type in lamp if you type in lights what you get is emergency lights and these basically require no power but they're not really meant for uh, your main power uh, light source they're basically like your emergency lights when things go bad now you need to type in lamp. Now, these all basically have the same values, I believe, and they can, the values can be adjusted. What you need to do is uh, when you uh, select one lamp down, you need to turn it on because by default, they are not turned on. You'll see light component is on, select it open, and now the lamp should be on. What you could do instead of adding another light is you go to the properties and increase the range of this lamp. There you go. So that now has the coverage of the entire room. You can also adjust the color of the, the lamp or the light itself by scrolling down and changing the color. So the alpha for this is 127, meaning it's not very strong. You can increase that number and give yourself fucking eye strain. The next stop is to actually power the lights. Just drag and drop over the power. Find a junction box that you really like or you want all the lights are going to be. Here's a slightly more complicated part of the submarine is actually wiring the functions of the uh, machines. Now, most of these don't really need much. So let's start with the pumps or ballast pumps first. The first thing you want to do is drag and drop, set target level, and you want to put that into your navigation terminal. Drop it onto your velocity Y out, which should be the second node. Now do those for all of the ballast pumps. In our case, we only have two. Next is the engine. This is going to be your X velocity. So you want to do set force and go to your terminal. Drag and drop on top of the X velocity. So the first node. All right. The next part is the docking hatch. Because we have these two and components, they need to be all drop onto the docking hatch node. Drag a wire and drop it on signal in one. Then drop it on to toggle docking. Do the same thing for the other and component. Drop it on signal in one. Drop it in terminal and then drop it in toggle docking. Perfect. All right, since we got movement already finished, this thing can move right now. We got to wire the guns. Now, this is not really hard. It's just long. Our rear periscope, you want to drop it in, position out, and in the coil gun themselves, drop the position out to the position in. Now, do uh, drag and drop your wire and trigger in and go to the periscope that you wired and then trigger out. Now do these for all the corresponding uh, periscopes that you want it to be in. Same thing with the turret hard point, position out, position in. Trigger in, trigger out. It's not that hard to do. The railgun is no different. All right, we're almost done with the submarine. Now we need to tell the game what is considered inside a submarine and what is outside a submarine. That's called a hull. Hulls are just spaces that tell the game what's inside a submarine. Or what's considered inside all right so i created a hull with a platform a and a lamp or a light tower so you can see and a spawn point so we can spawn now because we are inside the hull it was going to be considered inside water will not flow because there is no gap let me show you notice how onto the left there is just the wall of water there is no water in here but if i walked out of the hall i'm considered into the ocean outside and i'm going to squish Watch what happens when I place a gap in between the hull and the ocean. Water will start automatically flowing through the gap. 
but only through the gap and nowhere else. So you need both hulls and gaps in between rooms to allow water and oxygen to flow through. If you don't have a gap and you're enclosed in a room without vents, ven without ventilation, you're going to run out of oxygen. Now, notice that these hulls are square. This was the problem of why I didn't want too much curve because it will start to complicate things. Try to make sure, a hull, make sure all the hulls are all flush with each other, are adjacent, and they kind of follow a grid. So I wouldn't use arrow keys in this case. Doors and hatches automatically have gaps. So all you have to do is overlap the hulls over the gap. Since we can't really stretch out this hull all the way to the, uh, to the end corner because there's going to be a gap on the outside of the submarine, we don't want that. What we want to do instead is actually have like a stepping stone or like a staircase effect where we try to fill up as many as we can without trying to go outside. Now, to combine these hulls together, we want to do select your main hull, hold space and link them all. This hull is navigation. So make sure everything is all flush with each other and try not to use arrow keys and follow a grid because if you use arrow keys, things will get shift off a little bit. Yeah, this is a second floor. We have to, we may need to raise this a little bit up so it at least overlaps the gap of this hatch. You could tell that the uh, the hull is touching the gap by seeing the arrow on the gap. Even though these this looks like it's barely touching or it's barely on the gap, these two arrows indicate that oxygen and water can flow through between these two hulls. Now, don't forget to do your airlock as well and make sure everything it touches everything. The second floor has to meet with the bottom floor. And this bottom right here is going to need multiple hulls. This arm right here is going to need multiple hulls. So we're going to have to do the same thing we did in navigation. Just try to create more. So in this case, we only needed two. Space, hold space, click, combine the two hulls together, call this armory. Now this engine room, because it actually has a bit more of an organic shape and it's a bit larger, it's going to take multiple hulls. So from top to bottom, we're going to stop around this area here. Now. Because these two hulls are touching each other, but there is no gap, what that means is no oxygen or water is going to fall, uh, come through at all. So we need to manually put a gap since there's no door here. So just do something like this, where it covers the, uh, the two hulls together. This is a good way of doing it. Ah, we need to put a gap in the armory. We need to put a gap in the navigation. Actually, we need two gaps because there's two hulls out here. Perfect. I think right now this looks really good. All right. Since we have the gaps, now we just need to do waypoints and spawn points. All right, let's just type in spawn point and select the locations of where you want the spawn points to be. So I'll put gunnery, uh, captain, engineer, and mechanic. Uh, to select a specific uh, role for a specific spawn point, select the spawn point you want it to be in and change assigned jobs to let's say captain. So this is the captain's room. You're also going to need a spawn point for cargo. So select spawn point and then select change the spawn type to cargo and that's it all right so the next part is waypoints so waypoints tell the ai how to maneuver your submarine so if you just click on the top right generate waypoints it will automatically create waypoints just click ok and it'll automatically make it for you now sometimes you get uh some really normal you get you get a, like a really normal um pathway but then on the outside it gets all funky it's all right you could start adjusting these now sometimes you will get uh, an issue where you might have a disconnect of two waypoints and you might get an error here and there to create attach waypoints together you could type in waypoint and manually add a waypoint yourself like that just like everything else with uh, linking hold space and then click on the waypoints and that's how you connect two waypoints together so now we have spawn points we have waypoints and it's pretty simple stuff really uh, the last thing is back walls so notice that our submarine doesn't really have a background to it. You want to maybe even go to the decorative tab and you'll see all the back walls that you have. Uh, see for the ballast, we'll just use the ballast back wall. All right. And then uh, more ballasts. Make it look cool. Perfect. Let's see. Now if our submarine works. All right. The final part is actually saving your on the top left corner beside the test button. Click save. Uh, name your submarine description of where you want it to be uh, the default for the price you can't really go lower than the normal price they gave you for in this case it's 3500 bucks you can't really go like 2000 
So this is, let's, I don't know, attack submarine. Uh, recommended crew size, that's up to you. Uh, to create a preview image, just click create and it'll automatically make it for you. Uh, or you can use browse and use your own images. After that, uh, just click save. So this is the warning screen, which will tell you like small errors that um, need to be fixed. Now you can suppress these warnings for this session. It's fine. Or you can go back and uh, fix it. In this warning, the submarine contains vents which haven't been linked. So we got to find the vent that hasn't been linked to the oxygen generator. Because that means, oh, I found it. It's this one right here. You need to name the tags of these ballast pumps to ballast. So comma ballast on the tags. I believe that's how it's supposed to be done. So the AI doesn't freak out whenever the room floods. Oh, there you go. No more errors. We did it, boys. Enjoy your submarine.